Hey everyone, welcome to Craft the World. Gonna do a little intro video here for this game. Um, take a little break from Medieval Engineers, just try out some different games, see what people out there are interested in. Got a ton to choose from, so I figure I'd just start on my list. Uh, I got into this game a little while ago, so I had it on my favorites list on Steam, so it was right at the top. So, um... Uh, Let's just start from the beginning. Do the campaign because you get a little tutorial right at the beginning. So I guess I'll just go through most of the tutorial, show a little bit of the gameplay, and probably end the video after showing a bit of the gameplay and see if there's any interest. Might do a second video just to follow up, but we'll see what happens. So the first campaign, level one, the land of new hope, small world, it's forest, weather events are average, it's hilly area, and it's supposedly an easy level. I have trouble with this game for some reason, so I guess I suck, or I don't know. Alright, here we go. Congratulations, we did it. We opened an ancient portal to this new world. That's the portal right there. That's also your stockpile, which is where all of your resources are kept, and you start with one little dwarf. <laughs> Plus one population growth. Going over the UI, we have a pause button up here. This is our dwarf counter at the top. We have one dwarf. This is our mana gauge, which you have certain spells that you can use in the game. I guess that's why I'm not very good at this game, because I don't use any of the spells. It just seemed kind of cheap to me. I don't know, because dwarves in any fantasy story world setting never really use magic so i don't know uh these are the coins which if i can find him grunt over here this big orc goblin guy actually runs a little shop where you can buy stuff using coins which you find just by mining resources either digging and mining ores and stone or cutting down trees randomly coins will drop over here we have our clock you have a day night cycle enemies come out during the night time so you got to be careful when going around and i lost my dwarf there he is all right um here is a go home button essentially when you have your shelter set up you can click on this and all your dwarves will go and hide in there not sure what these are for. Oh, and I'm um, skipping some of the tutorial. And this is essentially, this is your tech tree, this button here. And over here you have your task list, which are basically quests to get through the levels. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, look around and start building your outposts. No one knows how dangerous it might be in this place. Open your journal to see the instructions we prepared for you. Come up here, new task. Pay attention to your tasks. Complete them to earn rewards. As you can see, complete the shelter. Complete the shelter by putting up a totem in its center. This will scare off monsters and evil spirits. The shelter must be protected by walls on all sides, while the entrances should be covered with doors or hatches. Words 10 XP. Over here, dig a tunnel. Many minerals are deep underground. Mark a downward sequence of blocks to dig a tunnel. So, gotta dig three down to get 10 experience. And the other one's cut down a tree. What is the basic construction material? Mark any tree to cut it down. Pay attention to your tasks. Complete them during rewards. Already read that. Switch to the bestiary tab. Here we record all of the creatures you met in this new world. So essentially just a uh, little bit of fluff telling you about different characters. Um, essentially hens and sheep are big things at the start. They Sheep drop wool, which you use to make rope, which is very essential for armor and backpacks so that your dwarves are protected and can carry more resources while out mining and chopping down trees and everything. So, and the uh, chickens will drop feathers and eggs when you kill them. Feathers are used to make arrows, and the eggs are used for food to feed your dwarves. Enough instructions. I agree. Let's get started. Cut down a few trees to get some resources. Click the bottom of the nearest tree. Come over here. Most of it is automated. 
you essentially assign tasks for your dwarves to do, and they'll... I'm not sure how the AI works for it, but they'll... Wow, got a lot from that tree. They'll basically, in their own time, go and do whatever you assign them to do. An alternative to that is you can take control of one dwarf at a time and go around and get resources and build structures yourself. I've tried that before, and unfortunately, I don't know how you gather resources. I don't know how you pick up a resource after it's been mined or chopped down, so I don't really use that too often because that's one thing that the dwarves don't seem to do when I play this game is they don't really pick up too many resources like I want them to. Test complete. Wood is basic construction material. Mark any tree to cut down. 10 XP. As you can see, we have our level counter here. We're at level 1. This bar is our experience gauge. You get experience for doing very minuscule amount of experience for doing simple tasks like cutting down trees, digging up stone and dirt, and so on and so forth. Great job. Now wait for the resources to be carried to the stockpile. As you can see, since he doesn't have any other task, he's picking up resources. I've run into the trouble where I don't assign... Oh, he fell. <laughs> I've run into the problem where there'll be tons of resources laying around, no tasks assigned, and they'll do just what he's doing right now. He'll just sit around doing nothing. We now have enough resources to build some necessary tools. Please open the workshop dialog by pressing the craft button. Down here you have the equip button, you can equip all your doors with whatever items you found, and then the craft button there, bring up the workshop. This is your workshop where you can craft various items and tools with the resources you have. On the left you can see the resources in your stockpile. Let's craft some tools for your dwarves. Well, dwarf right now. But first, let's craft a nice, strong club. Switch to the Armory tab. Come over to Armory tab. Click on the slot with the club scroll to see its recipe. And that guy's tough. Big axe. Hook for a hand. Bulging muscles. Click on the club. You need two pieces of wood to craft a club. Switch to the first resources tab, where you can find the pieces of wood you need. Drag pieces of wood from the stockpile slot to the slot on the crafting table. As you see, exclamation points and little flare up, little uh, tooltip things showing you where you have new resources that you, uh, just new resources in your inventory that weren't there before to help you see what new stuff you have acquired. So come over here. Little trick, instead of clicking and dragging to each individual slot, if you place one down adjacent to other objects in the crafting window that are the same object, if you double click on it, it will automatically fill the slot for you. So just a quick little tip there. All right, you now have all the resources you need. Press the craft button. Oh, ho, ho. Excellent. Our power is growing. You've reached the next level and can now take in more settlers. Every time you level up, you get a new dwarf that comes through your portal, which is at your stockpile. And the more dwarves you have, the more faster you can build, gather resources, dig tunnels, and the easier it is to defend your base. So now that that's done, level up. Get a new dwarf, we get the totem. Basically, the totem is your... Home, you need a totem in your structure, your home structure, so that your dwarves can sleep there and heal their hearts after they take damage. Which in early game, you mostly take damage from dwarves trying to climb and slipping and falling and hurting themselves. But then after that, you start taking a lot of damage from skeletons and zombies that come and try and attack you. So we did get a club which we can equip to our newest dwarf, which will be coming in a moment. At last! Later, you can craft other tools and items. For now, let's equip somebody with this new club. Sounds good. We come down here to the equip. Drag the club to the weapon slot. Alright, now we can defend ourselves.
Here's the uh, equip screen for all of your dwarves. They're all the same. You have your armor slot here. You have your foot slot here. Right here you have your... I'd call it your utility slot, I guess. You can place a backpack there. You can place different items you can craft later in the game, which will help your skills. Like a blacksmith apron is one of them, which will help your give your blacksmith more experience as he crafts things for you. Um, your head slot item right now, just feathered hat. They're just decoration items basically right now. You have your axe slot, I guess, which is what they use for chopping down berry bushes and trees. You have your weapon slot, naturally, and then you have your digging tool, which is basically your pickaxe when you get them. If they, they start out when they first come to your world with just a shirt, maybe a hat, the hats are all different, they're just vanity items and a stone knife, and they can do everything with the stone knife just extremely slowly. So you want to upgrade them as soon as possible. You definitely want to give them a club when you can so they can more quickly defeat enemies if they get into trouble. Continuing on, there's our new dwarf, plus one population growth. So go back to equip, and up here you can see an arrow, Lorne. See, he didn't come with a hat, just a shirt and his stone knife, but we'll equip him with the club. He is a logger, is his skill. So basically, he can cut down trees and wood do woodworking crafts. Uh, certain late game items that you make with wood require a woodworking table, and a dwarf actually has to go craft the items for you. But beginning of the game lots of simple items you're able to craft for your dwarves but as a logger he can cut down trees faster and he can craft the later game woodworking items a lot faster i actually haven't got to the fishing in the game yet that's a more a late game thing when you get more settled down and more defensible and basically his skill is fishing he's able to more easily catch fish i guess Right, continuing on, I guess we'll just start clearing out this area, get some berries, cut down these trees. We, what I want to do right from the start is try and get a little bit of a level area around my stockpile, and then one of the first things you want to do, instead of actually protecting your stockpile, you want to be able to protect your dwarves above all else so you actually want to dig down below your stockpile and create a little room for them that's going to be the safest thing at the beginning of the game to do because when enemies come and try and steal your supplies at the end of the end of the night when the sun rises they all burn away and drop all your supplies so you can always go and get them back so it's best to protect your dwarves over your stockpile at the very beginning of the game Another thing with this game is you have foreground blocks and you have background blocks, so you always want to remember that when you're mining for ore. Oh, we completed a task, dig a tunnel. Many minerals are deep underground. Mark a downward sequence of blocks to dig a tunnel, 10 XP. But uh, when you're digging actual ores, like iron and gold in the ground, ooh, stale. They don't fight back and they let you make torches. They drop slime, which you can make torches with. But uh, sometimes background blocks will contain ores when you're digging them, so you want to pay attention to that and grab them when you can. Also, it helps everything to look more crisp and clean when you're... when you're trying to clear out an area. Wow, they are really slow. Earth, stone, roots. I have a cool. Some players can use to make potions and spices. Alright, I've never got to the alchemy of the game, so. Here's different food. You need a table in order to feed your dwarves, which you haven't unlocked yet. Um, basically, you place the table in the house and you just place the food onto the table and they'll 
go and eat whenever they get hungry. One thing I haven't showed is the technology tree. You start on the left and you just follow the arrows working all the way to the right. You start out with basic woodworking and basic tool making. Now the way this works is to unlock the next tier, you have to have the tiers before it that have arrows pointing to them to try and explain that a bit better. If you want basic weaponry, you can't just have basic armor completely unlocked to unlock basic weaponry. You need basic armor unlocked and advanced ironworking unlocked to gain access to basic weaponry. That's how that works. The way you fully research a branch on the tech tree, I guess, the way you fully research one is you make the items that are in it. You just you craft the items that are in it in the uh, part of the tree you want to unlock. So here we have ladders, we have a wooden hatch, we have a log bridge. We're going to want to build a wooden hatch because you need that to have a secure, secure home for your dwarves so that they feel safe and so enemies can't get to them. I have to start this again in the morning, trying to work on leveling out this plane. Skeletons are going to start coming soon. And at this phase of the game, I'm not nearly well equipped enough to fight them. Bird. It's like a angry bird. Weird. Wonder if that's intentional. All right, there's our wooden hatch. Uh, go back to craft. You click and drag into your inventory. You can get rid of items on your toolbar. Yes, we got a slime and lots of resin. You get resin from trees, cutting down trees. It's used to make torches too. The slimes from snails used to make um, bone torches. You get you collect bones from killing skeletons. Combine those with the slime, and you get a torch. The easier way is you use wood and resin, and that gives you a regular torch. Next, we're going to need some ladders so that our dwarves don't kill themselves trying to get in and out. Three should be enough. Automatically puts it down in your bar for you. Now with ladders, you can place them basically anywhere, even if there's not a background tile to place it on. And essentially, your dwarves can't fall when climbing a ladder. So that's nice early game, so they don't kill themselves. As you can see, they have to go and grab the ladder I crafted from the stockpile and bring it back to where I wanted them to construct it. Oh man, we got the big zombie right off the bat. Glowing with radiation. That's not good. Ooh, we have new tasks. Let's go over those real quick. New technology, basic woodworking. You must craft items to finish research researching this technology, as I said. And collect stones. Our future shelter will need strong stone walls that can protect against monsters. Collect some stones. Are you working on that? Uh, if you come to the notes section of your task book, it gives... Basically, introductory to the game, how to play and build and what to do. So uh, you can read through that. I know for me, learning, seeing a game actually being played is a lot easier to learn how to play. <laughs> Mage's Book teaches you how to turn flies into elephants and other spells. Use to increase a skill for selected dwarves. I've actually never had that skill for a dwarf before. I probably won't use it, as I've already shared my stance on magic with dwarves. Alright guys, you need to run from him, so... I need to find the totem.
since there is no shelter, the totem marks your shelter. It basically makes sure that there's walls and a hatch or a door. And that's what qualifies it as a shelter, and then your dwarves can hide in it. See? House complete. Complete the shelter. 10 XP. Alright, this guy here, he's just a ghost of a miner. He's just a ghost, he'll come and he'll pick something up from your resource stockpile and just basically toss it around. He's doesn't attack you or anything, he's just a nuisance. Now why these guys came over here and just hid is beyond me. But since we're trapped in here for the rest of the night, might as well start digging. Oh, they came back and now they're attacking my wooden hatch. <laughs> Not sure how long that'll hold, though. I've actually never seen how long. I've always gone out and attacked them before they can finish. Hopefully you can last till morning. New task. Find iron ore. Most instruments and weapons are produced from iron. Find an iron ore deposit. I already have, which is right here. That's how I got the quest. See, he just comes and throws stuff around. Ooh, there's a second one. Like, they're just... A, they're just bothersome. They don't really do any damage. They don't attack your dwarves or holdings or anything. That wood hatch really holds up well. Guys, go mine. Their backpacks are full. That's probably why they're not. Ah, there went the hatch. We're gonna have to attack them. Your shelter is not complete until it has back walls and side walls, plus a door or a hatch. I already know that. Let's go up and kill him. This guy would be hard to kill at this point. Oh, they're gone now. Sweet. Next day, sun comes out, all the enemies die. Unfortunately, if I can find it... It might not be on the map yet. Here's the edge of the map. You got the ocean and the obsidian tiles to kind of block you from leaving the edge of the map. It might not have appeared yet, which I don't think it has. Nope. At some point in the, in the game... Oh, click soon. Got a club and 50 XP. Nice. Like I was saying, at a later point in the game, a goblin camp will pop up. And goblins basically wait until all your doors are away from the stockpile and then come and try and steal everything. And that can be daytime or nighttime. The sun doesn't affect them. So you gotta watch out for that. Did not know that. They didn't destroy the hatch it just removes it and you can bring it back that's nice so you don't have to make another one collect a few more stone because you need stone to make tools the initial tools at least one iron ore you have two doors two stone picks and do we have enough? Oh, we got plenty. Two stone axes. And we leveled up. Basic tool making complete. Level up, we get a new dwarf, we get an apple, we get a club. Cane is our first one. Give him a stone pick, stone axe. 
Thorn, Stone Axe, Stone Pick. We're actually going to need two more now, or one more of each. Ooh, don't have enough. I have to cut down some more trees. Have enough clubs for two more, actually. Ori! Here's an axe, here's a club, go to town. Come over here. It's three high, that's pretty rough. Beware! These dangerous creatures live in tall trees. Your dwarves will attack enemies on their own. It's another thing, whenever you start chopping down trees, sometimes a giant tick will fall out of the tree, and you'll have to take care of it. They do attack back, so you'll lose a tiny, tiny bit of health, but they're not rough to kill at all. Uh, let's see if we can craft that yet. Oh yeah, plenty of wood now. There we go. Take a look at our new task. Basic illuminating. You must craft items, finish researching this technology, so we can actually build our Make our torches now. Kill 10 skeletons. Attacking your camp to gain some combat experience. Mark the nearest skeleton so that the dwarves attack it together. Basic furnishing. So we can craft beds now so any injured dwarves can regain their health. Ooh, he got a logger skill. I didn't check his skills. Lorne is the logger, okay, and Ori's a warrior. There's no way to find out what the actual skill is unless you have a skill book for it. Alright guys, I think I'm going to end the video there. Got a nice introduction to it. Found a gold coin. They'll take that back to the stockpile and we can buy something from Grunt Shop if he has anything cheap enough. Um, going to end the video there. That's basically all there is to it. Basically, you keep gathering resources, crafting items to unlock new techs in your tech tree. And game does an all right job explaining the stuff as you go along it's uh it's missing a few things a few key things so you kind of got to figure it out on your own there's a few things you got to figure out on your own but uh for the most part most of it's explained rather well there's another skill book you actually have to click on the skill books to collect them the dwarves don't collect them for you increase the speed at which wooden objects are made i guess that doesn't apply to the logger skill then. I must have read it wrong. Anyway, there's that skill. Um, one last big thing that'll happen is after two or three days, I forget how many days, a timer will appear next to your clock up here. And basically it'll be a giant wave of enemies that'll come and attack you every 45 minutes, which is three days, I think. I think a full day and night cycle is 15 minutes. So that's kind of uh, what you're working towards. You can't really take too much time to like build a aesthetically pleasing structure. You really got to work to defend yourself to get the text research so that you can start making armor and better weapons so you can defend yourselves from the big waves that come at you. Anyway, that's everything. If you enjoyed if you enjoyed the game, want to see more, you can leave a like, leave a sub if you're interested in seeing more videos from me, and have a good day.